Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Rogue Bit. I've been looking forward to getting back to this game. I just haven't had an opportunity. And, as it happens, today in the second day of the semester, um, I have a little bit of an opening. Let me get back to it. Let's see if we pick up where we left off. I had just entered the house. So, yep, that's precisely where I had been. So, uh, yes, we had learned that B is the hint button. All right. Turn the volume up a bit here, just a sec. I need I need you to be able to hear the uh, sound effects. And away we go. That beeping that you keep hearing is the uh, the increment. There's an add one going on here. And here is our instructions for add. It's a little weird that the instructions come after the thing is already doing the thing, but that's fine. All right, add instruction.txt, byte 97, ASCII A, add byte, adds byte value to the data register. The data register is currently sitting at 37.00110111, and every time we go through an add, you see that changes, except we also have a swap and a jump right afterwards, so. So. In case of overflow, when the result cannot fit into a single byte, sum is more than 255, the result will wrap. For example, 255 plus 10 equals 9, and that is what we're seeing here. Okie dokie. A simple counter. Get value for 1s. Check if it is ASCII code for digit 9. If yes... Uh, if yes, we need to increase 10s, so jump there. If... Uh, not nine, so we just add one. Copy register back to RAM, repeat the program, set ones to zero. Adding 247 wraps the byte to zero. Copy back to RAM. All right. Four, 43, four, 44, 45, and so on. All right. We hit a red block, so program changed. I've got to compare, swap. Jump equals jump. Let's move forward so we can see what we need to do with it, though. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I'll take the one that's a dead end, apparently. Let's go back. Exit to the right. Okay, but what's left? Oh, it jumped me. There is a purple. Aha! Rebel. Achievement unlocked. That's right. That describes me in some fashion, I suppose. <laughs> Alright, exit to the right. Alright, first select your destination, then commence the boarding. All right, then. Well, uh, we saw before we were able to jump. We do that. No, nope, not this time. All right. What is our current position? E6, B9. Uh, B. B. F, B9. And jump. That's to C5AF. We can see that swap right there. Um, but we can also now swap. We do. There, there's a compare here, so we compare that. Swap uh, that to uh, BFB4, where we are now. Um, that's not the puzzle. We are swapping in these places, but where do I need to be? Let's see if we can figure that out. Uh, looks like EF, E9. Um, there's compare for EF. So CBAE is our jump equal.
Maybe um all right, how do we get to that then? Um Not there. This is the FD4. C5AF is the compare here 40. Um, yeah, I wasn't really looking to do that, but that's DC. Where'd that come from? Okay, let's look at the code. Let's think it through. All right, so compare 40 is our, okay, that's our character. Data register is currently sitting at zero. Um, where is that one down here in C? No, it's BF9, BFB9, so right there. There we go. When we get swapped into the register, that value of 40 is us. All right, so we're swapped in. It compares our value, swaps us back out to C. F oh, wait, hold on a sec. No, 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 no. It swaps us to C5AF directly after that. But if we go through one more time, no, it's going to swap us out to BFB4. CBA7. Yeah, so we're swapped out there. Okay, so how do we remain in the register for the compare? C5 AF. The FD4. If we get swapped down there, okay, hold on a sec. Let's walk through it. All right. We're swapped out before the compare in every case. Okay. I know what we need to do. I'm just trying to figure out how to do it right now. So if you look at the code on the right, what we what we need to do is there is an add one right there, CBAF. What we need to do is somehow increment each uh, one. Just we have three swap addresses there. If we can increment one of them to a place beyond our barrier, then we can just swap out of the puzzle and that will be a solution. But what I'm struggling with right now is how to, how to trigger the compare. CBA is CCA8. CBA7. All right, I shouldn't say it's trigger the compare. I should say trigger conditions for equality here in the evaluation. But 
whatever, close enough. Um, CBA. Let's try the hint button here. Okay, those are the three lo jump locations we know about. And then there's CB, A8, A7, and those other addresses we see in there. So what I really need I need to be on I need to be on C5AF in order to be in the register. That's what I need. But I can't get there, because that's a line up. C oh, there's C5AF. It's the, okay, that's this position. So, all right. I'm now in the register. Here's our compare. C5AF. That'll put me right back where I was. CBAE. That's the compare, though. So then I should jump to... CB, uh, or, um, um, CBAE, which is a swap. Okay, and I do. Uh, CCA8. Okay, I don't know why that... Oh, it did. Okay, so the swap happened. You can see the data register right there has that value. Then we add, okay, now we triggered the, how come I, this, I just did, I was just doing this. How come I didn't, maybe I just didn't have the timing right or something. So there's the ad we were trying to trigger. Uh, compare EF. Um, that value EF is, uh, uh, um, um, Doing, trying to do the translation in my head. Hold on, let me just let me just look it up. Text to desk translation. I'm not quite that good. Uh, two thirty nine. Two thirty nine. Okay, so uh, that's gonna fail. Because we're not quite at that. CBB4 is the next add statement. Swap CCA8. That's the second address. We can see that that has changed to OOB9. But that's not what we're looking for. We don't want OOB9. COB. I don't think that's what we're looking for either. I think we're looking for... Oh, shit. I already forgot what, uh, what we're going for here. CBA7. All right, and then we're back to the top of the swaps. So I can do this again. I'm still in the current position, so it'll do the comparison. It will pass. It will swap right back to exactly where I am. And then it will do another add. Now we're at C1. So we need to keep doing this until we can get uh, equal to EF. At C2, C3, C4, C. Five, C six, and we're getting closer. You can see that the second position uh, is um, continually incrementing. What? Hold on. What is the uh, what is the target here? It's uh, C. It's uh, E. Yeah, E F. E F B nine. FB9. Okay, so. So we 
keep going. C7, C8, C9. We're just going to keep doing this. We got a ways to go. And E2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. A, B, C, D, E, and F. Oh shit, did I go too far? Oh no. Damn it. Well, you know, this ought to be fine. Let's go to uh, this one down here. Swap. Jump. Okay. We, we overshot. Oh, hold on a sec. There's a secret there. Shit. I could have broke out of the... I could have broke out of the matrix. Oh, well. All right. Maybe there's maybe there's another opportunity to get to get in there. We'll see. All right. Remember, adding numbers beyond two fifty five wraps around. Uh, damn. I really I really wish I had known that was there. I would have gone for it. All right. Uh, so yeah, wraps around. So one ninety two plus two forty equals four thirty two minus two fifty six is seven or uh, one seventy six. Just the same as if that's the hex translation. C O plus F O equals one B O minus one hundred equals B O. Um, that's adding. Swap F two C O, so that's yep down that hallway. Uh, there's no compare. Jump F two C four. Now we got swap F two C. C. That's up there. That's the that, in that nine position there. Um, okay, I can see that value changing. I'm just gonna cycle through a couple times here. Two C two. F O C four would be uh yep, that's up there. Five six, that's the counter. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, 39, which is the next pass. Here. All right, so there's our comparison to 39. Uh, we're going to get a FOC9 is AO, so that 39, 39 is not greater than AO. So we'll get a JL to FC, F3C6, F DC six right there. Okay, compare AO. Uh, FOD one. That's a swap down there. Compare seven A. FOCE is that position to my uh. Uh, left there, add F7, down to 30, 
so that wrapped around that overflowed and we're back to zero and that was the less than that triggered so that moved over to different code for the increment so like it's like this is reverse engineering this would be like if uh the a function was called or something like that so when you call function it, it goes to the code in the function and this would be like an increment function all right so i'm getting a handle on what it's doing um we need to let's see uh so we, we have a counter right it goes up to 10 and then it wraps around uh, because it overflows so it resets back to zero 30, 30 to 39 is what the data register is going to and you can see up at the top that number is being displayed there um but what's my condition to escape here uh, now that we now that we know how it's working what do we do um let's check the ascii table here um ascii 39 is the digit die? I'm sorry. All right. So ASCII three nine. This compare here is comparing three nine. That's what the counter is doing. So it compares if the digit in the counter is greater than, equal to, or less than nine, and it's currently eight. If it's less than, then it jumps into a let's say a function that increments, and then displays the new number nine okay so now the counter is at nine it compares to see if that value is nine it's not greater than it is equal to and so that's going to jump to foc nine which is the same function as the greater than okay so foc nine is another compare it's comparing with a o um okay and if all right so it is not greater than compares with 7a and if it is less than that foce which is add f7 so basically it's just subtracting nine uh so when we as we saw in the previous puzzle if when you're doing add functions if you overflow it's basically the same as subtracting so we're basically adding a number that causes it to go all the way back around and reset so we we count to nine when we reach nine we subtract nine and we start all over again and then it's less than add one less than add one less than add one until we get to nine and then it does equal and then it subtracts so we need to figure out how to achieve that greater than state but it can't just be greater than it has to be um it has to be greater than a o and then it will jump to f o d one which is our swap. Um, all right, so that's how we solve it. Well, that's what we need to do, but how do we solve it from here on out? Let's, let's see what this is here. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so E, C, C, E is where the character that we need to remove see oh sorry d e d c e there it is right there um e d c e in position f o d two that's what we need to get to um and we get there if we do swap e d c c Uh, which would be an empty value. Okay. All right. So then 
it's F three D seven. Right? F three. It's an X down there below us, and C six D one. Okay. So basically in order to make all of this happen we need to somehow get the value in the register to exceed AO which gives us a lot of options because I mean but it's going to be a character uh, it can't have a 1 in the 7 position that still gives us quite a bit um, so so kind of, I'm trying to explain my thought process here as I go. Sorry if I'm being unclear. Um, but let me, let me quick break it down. All right, so what we have here is a simple program that is incrementing a counter. When it gets to nine, it resets it to zero, and it starts all over again. But there are three evaluations being done for our counter. There's a greater than, equal than, or less than. So where the greater than should never be something that occurs, it would be something that might be, you know, uh, something that's in a program as an exception. You know, if somehow the counter were to exceed a certain value, then there would be code to handle that eventuality. That really should never happen. But what the code is actually doing here is it's doing a second comparison with AO. And when AO is triggered, as long as it's greater than that value, and if we look at the ASCII table, we can see AO here is des. 160, this is the top of the third to last column, it's the A with the accent over it. Um, then it will jump to FOD1, which jumps us down there to a couple of swaps that should take care of our barrier. But the question is, how do we get the counter to exceed AO? Now, we need to pick a character here and our choices are actually limited because the A with an accent is in hex AO-160. We need a character that doesn't have a one in the seventh position because that's where our character lives. And the entire second to last and last column of the hex table then are completely out for us. We cannot use them. They all have a one in the second position. So we're looking for anything greater than AO. So A1 all the way down to BF in that third column will fit the bill. So we are looking for uh, an I with an accent, O, U, N, Y, N, Y, uh, A superscript, O superscript, um, upside down question mark. I'm sorry if there's probably names for these that I'm not familiar with, and I apologize. I, did, I have taken some foreign languages, but I'm hardly an expert. Uh, but shading and then a couple of the barriers, excluding, of course, the one that we are actually trying to get through. Um, what else is available to us? Um, oh, wait, hold on a sec. I just realized, um, that we change the character by jumping into it. So we're actually not looking for anything in that column. We're looking for something much lower, but we want to change into something in one of these higher columns above AO. So we, yeah, we, we actually don't want to jump into any, I mean, we can, um, but we don't want to jump into one of those if uh, if another one is available, because we will change into them. So actually, the last two columns are available to us. Um, let's see. Uh, what what can we do here? Uh, so we're looking for... No, no, no. I'm, no, we are still looking for one of these without a one. We, we will change them, but uh, we want to change into one of these in the higher, higher orders. Um... Ah, let's see. Oh, hold on. I see something. I see something. There's a, the smiley face character there is, if you look at the hex table, in hex 01. I wonder if... Hold on, let's... Um... F three 
C6. We are on C6. This is F6. F5. F4. Ah. Ah, there we go. That smiley face represents the one that is being incremented. So by sitting here and changing that from a one, we, we add our seventh position to that character, which transforms it into a capital A, which is hex for one. And so instead of adding one, we will add 41. Okay, so let's, one sec, let's go through. I'm gonna increment up four, five, six, seven, eight. And now add 41. We've transformed that into a lowercase y, which is down here at hex 79. I don't think that's that's not quite as high as we need it to be, I think. But now the the greater than should trigger, because we're definitely higher than nine. There's our comparison to AO1. Now this should fail. So or will it? Compare seven A. Uh, that is uh, there, uh, middle of the fourth column, um, and that should still fail. Cause we, we, that's a lowercase z, and we're a lowercase y right now. But jump less than is F-O-C-E, which is to add, okay, then that's to subtract 9, but we're much higher than 9. So if we look at the counter... When it comes back up, now we're a P. Uh, that's right there again, fourth column. We can see that we were at 7, 9, now we're at 7, 0. So I subtracted 9, but that's okay. Uh, we should just need to iterate around one more time, and the counter will get us where we need to be. Ought to, anyway. Oh, but we need to be less than in order to do an add, don't we? Yeah, it's just going to keep counting down now. Hmm. So it has to be less than nine in order to trigger the increment, which is what we're able to alter. Um, and otherwise it will just count down by nine until eventually it gets to that condition anyway. So we're close, we're close, we're close. We're not quite there. We need somehow to either add more than just 41, which I'm not, I'm not sure how to do that right now. Um, FOC4, FOC4, is that swap? F2C2 is that there, comparing it with nine. Still greater than, still less than AO. Jump to D. Uh, oh, sorry, not greater than, less than. So compare to 7A, uh, which is Z. It is less than, so FOCE. Remove 9. Swap back. And, yep, yeah, okay. So, yes, we need to add more. Um, what happens here if it's greater than the Z, then the less than will fail, then it will add C8. Okay. Um, and now we are in the third column, so... I'm going to keep iterating through here. I want to see... Yep. Yep. It's just going to iterate through by nines, and then we're in this loop where it's never really... It's doing one increment, and then it's jumping back up and end. All right, so we're close. We're close, we're close. Okay, think, 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 think. Uh, oh, okay, all right. But if we 
Oh, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna reset my situation here. All right. All right, we're back to zero. This is the nine that is being compared to. Aha. Aha, aha, I see. Okay, so now we can go eight, four, five, six, seven, eight. Add that. And now, did I miss the boat on that? I might have missed it. I might have missed it. All right. Nope, I'm good. So we're at uh, 7, 5. If you look at the data register, we just need to increment up to 79. And now we'll be equal to C9 uh, compared to AO. So that will still fail. Here to 7A, that's Z. No, we're back in the same loop, but we're close. Um, what we need to do is... Seventy one. Okay, we need to... Do a little bit of move in here. Oh, that's too late. Wait, where am I now? I don't remember seeing this before. Oh, I must have accidentally uh, jumped to the right code here. Because the thing moved. I, I just didn't notice that I did it. All right, so I missed the actual moment of it happening, uh, but I did understand what I had to do at least. Um, all right. Okay. Boy, that was... That was, uh, that was a bit of a brain buster right there. That was a good puzzle. All right, 82CE, add 80, swap... A two C okay jump C six D one it's this S here and eight two C E is nah, I don't even not anywhere on my map as far as I can see. Is this part of that? Is part of the same puzzle? Is this just a second part to it? No, that's going in the wrong direction. It's this direction is where those memory addresses are. I don't see them right now. Okay, well, um, whatever is at 82CE, I can't see. It's off the side of my screen. Um, but I do see that the X is at C2CE. And obviously that's not a coincidence, um, A2CE and C2CE, that's where the swap needs to occur. So what I need is to change line one, line two, uh, line three and line four. So not down there. Um, or do I have to go? There we go. All right, now I can swap that out with that. And is that a byte that I can actually go through? Yep. Oh, no, I can't. Um, add, okay. Uh, oh, we need to continue to add. Is that what it is? No, it's okay. No, it's just add add eighty. Add eighty would be one twenty eight plus one twenty eight. This is two fifty six, which means it's just resetting back to zero. So that's just flopping it back and forth between those two values. Um, 
but I can change it with this. So I can do this. Do that, do that, then do that. There we go. Oh, but now it's going to do that. <laughs> Damn it. All right, now I got to now I got to trigger this the other way. Uh yes, that Okay, now that and then that No, that's still... <sighs> All right. Here. I did it again. <laughs> I keep doing the same thing over and over again. Okay. It's time for real. Okay, so I need... It's hard to do this because I can't see what's happening off the screen. Um, Alright, so we need to get this swap. And... No, that was the wrong one. There's the swap. Come back around here. Add. Oh, wait. I was trying to do the change and then the swap, but it just occurred to me that that's not going to work. All right. Well, I'm kind of back where I was then. Okay. Uh, then we got to do it again. All right, there's that. All right, now we need to swap these two. Okay, now that that is swapped. Oh, no, I, I guess I kind of have to do it off screen, don't I? I kind of don't have a choice. There we go. All right, new program. It's time to calculate five plus three equals, and there's our calculator program. Okay. One M. All right, so we're gonna need to figure out how this is working in order to get the right value here. All right, so uh, we are at, uh, the value for eight uh, is hex three eight dash five six, and we're way past that right now. So we need to overflow that and see what is it counting by seven eight. All right, so it is by one. E C. D, E, and F, and then we're back at zero, and then we got to get to three. Oh, we we uh, we didn't over we overshot it, but uh, the program is clearly doing more than just incrementing because I think we started out above where we're supposed to be. So looks like we're going to actually do some work here. Um, all right, let's see. What we got there's that value. Uh, o S and there's that X. Okay. Um, so that X is in six, seven D one or sorry, six, six D one. That's, uh, on seven, seven CB right there. That's the swap. 
seven seven CB is seven seven C nine is the start of the swap block, and that goes from seven O C seven. That's that one right there. Uh seven O C seven is Uh, that's that block up there where the equal sign is. Um, add nine. All right, so swap seven O C seven, which is, I think, this value right here. Yeah, because that's the swap that's happening right there. In that block, okay. All right, so swap that. Add one. Compare, see if it's 3, 9. That's the value 8. That's what we're looking for. If it's equal, then jump to C, uh, 7, 7, C9. 7, 7, C9 is that block there. 7, 7, or 7, 0, oh, C7. Okay, yeah, that's that value. That's what I was just looking at. Um, all right, so... Uh, where was I? 7 O C C. Okay, 7 O C C. 7 and Check if it's equal to... C9, that's that swap. So swap the value there. Okay. Then add three nine or add three nine, which we know is the value nine. Six. Let's let's go around again. This time let's be a little bit more careful about what we're doing here, huh? Eight. There's, it starts at nine. That's the problem. Okay, that's why it will never reach eight. Starts at nine. All right, so in order to avoid that, we need to change that value, which should be right here. And then uh, it will just add, but we could also change the value here of eight where it's looking for 7, 8, and then that would do it too. So we just need to sit here until uh, we get to 7, 8. We're, oh, I already passed it. 7F. Let's go all the way around again. I'm not sure exactly what happened. Or we could have, well, we could sit here and have it add more than that so that it's a little bit faster, but we're already at F6, so... Alright. Oh, well, how did it jump to... What did I miss? Alright. Well, it's at 3-2. Uh, hold on, I'm missing something here. Something something is happening that I'm unclear on. Alright, now we're at 7-1. Seven, 7-2, seven, okay, this ought to work. Something hinky happens here. What is going on there?
Um, it's the add nine. E F and then at seven nine. Okay. I'd have to. I'm starting to think I might have to actually do some math here to see if I can, if it's even possible to jump down to a point where yeah, yeah, okay. I think this might be a math puzzle where I need to figure out the addition and subtraction in order to get the value I'm looking for. Um, oh boy, let me, let me think here. Um, okay, so we need to do, the puzzle says it's time to calculate, and from what I'm seeing of what's going on here, that's exactly what we need to do. Um, so... We can change the add 1 to add 41, and we can wrap around, but with the add 39, we have to make sure that we are low enough that we either hit the number on the head, or we hit the number nine away from, or 39 away from that. Um, so, <clears throat> um, we're looking for 8, which is hex 3, 8. Um, des 56, we can add 41, which is des 65. So what plus 65 will wrap around to land on 56? Um, so we need, um, 255. Um, oh, Jesus Christ. All right, 65 minus uh, 56, 9, uh, so 9 from 255. Um, looks like hex 4, 7, does that seem right? See if my math is right. I think it's four seven. E two, E three, four, five, E six. That's no, that's hex two seven. Uh, that was quite a bit away from where we're going. Let's 
so yeah, 56, or uh, 65 minus 56. And then, so nine away from that. But hold on a sec, I must be wrong here because two seven is three nine. Three nine is, that's more than the, uh, hex to des is such a pain in the butt to convert in my head. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not very good at math. I'm really not. Um, I would say my math my math experience is highly situational and dependent on a number of factors. All right, so if it was it's how was it not F seven? Let's try it again. This time I'm gonna land on F seven and then we'll do the add instead of F six and then adding from F seven and at least see if my results are consistent, if not logical. Because last time, if we landed on 2.7, then we should get 2.8. Yeah. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, there's 3.8. That's our number. So uh, now we'll get the jump equal. We get the swap. And there we go. Beepers, I tell you. Achievement unlocked calculator. This is a great game. The, the puzzles are, are excellent. Jail Cell, Legacy, Bug. I wonder how much more time I have in this. I can tell it's done. When fixing legacy code, don't waste your time trying to understand everything. Just focus on replacing the bad code instruction with the proper one. Clearing the path. Oh, oh C9, take an empty cell. Replace obstacle. Move it away. Jump to next program. Okay. The X is in position 05D2. 05D2 is not, uh, it doesn't seem to be listed here. Jail cell is 45C2. I see that there at 49CF. We have that remember that address. Oh. And I didn't even realize what I was doing. I was just looking at the way the code is the letters are changing. Hmm. All right. Well, I can see where I need to jump in, but <laughs> All right. Oh, did I did I somehow do it? Oh, I did somehow do it. <laughs> he wasn't even paying attention. <laughs> uh, all right, honestly, that one was just uh, that one was just blind luck. I, I I hadn't even started to dissect the code, so um, I'm not really sure exactly how that worked. But we'll take it and we'll move on. All right, fifty six pages. Yeah, okay, I can see. I, I saw a page instruction in there, and I was you know glad we're getting to that but you are inside an 8-bit computer that uses two bytes for addresses since every byte can have 256 values 00 to ff this gives us 256 times 256 is the magic number 65 536 different combinations from 0000 to ffff when divided by uh, 1024 
can see that it's exactly 64 kilobytes of RAM. This is correct, 100%. However, this computer has more than 64 kilobytes of memory. It has 16 megabytes. To address all this memory, we have to split it into segments called pages. Page register tells CPU which page is currently in use. It executes programs stored in the segment and all other and all operations like swap access RAM from that page. Page instruction tells CPU to switch the value of page register. While you're in a different page than the page register value, the execution of programs by, by, by CPU is paused. All right, so we got to jump into... Three A F sorry, three A F A here. Compare um equal to three D D H two. Well, new power acquired. Press the page flip button, default A to flip between pages you have already visited. Currently two and forty two. Oh my god. Holy shit, really? That's a whole new dimension to this game. Wow. Uh, it's way more than I expected to, uh, out of, I mean, this was already a good game, but this is way more than I expected. Welcome to memory page two. There we are. Uh, that's incredible. Wow. That's, that's excellent. All right, well, I don't know how much more time uh, I have in this game. Let's see, there's still three achievements I haven't done. Uh, one of them is to find a secret, one of them is to reach address zero, and one of them is to reach the end, so I suspect I don't have much longer to go. Um, and I can remain in my... So, like, yeah... I remain in my position. Wonder if I can use this to get to position zero. Um, stuck here. Wow. Being able to do this must have made it so difficult for, uh, in the design process. I, I gotta respect that. Uh, maybe maybe not. I don't know. Maybe just hand drawn overlays or something would have done it. Just a just a suspicion. Well, let's see what we we gotta do in order to get here. Cause we're we're nearly there here. Oh well, I guess this is. Does it say which? Well, I'm not going to look at it. But um, all right. In any event, uh, now, now what the hell was I doing? I'm so enamored with this, I've forgotten what I'm actually here to accomplish. It's time to turn a new page. Um, I think in any event, I think I'm going to leave it at that because this seems like a whole new thing and uh, I just I, I don't have any more time really to, to get into it. Uh, so second part road bit. Um, still, I still really enjoy this game. Uh, this is absolutely a hidden gem. I don't know how much this cost me on Steam, but it it couldn't have been very much. Let's see what's the current going rate for this thing. Um, it's eight bucks. Oh my god, it's so worth every penny. Um, absolutely without a doubt, hidden gem. I uh, love this game. I'm going to come back uh, for part three to finish it at a later date. Um, but honestly, I could not be happier. Um, great learning experience. A couple of the puzzles I, I kind of accidentally stumbled through or something like that, which is unfortunate. Um, 
you know, like the last one, I didn't really solve it. I just walked over there and I lucked into the solution. So I didn't really get anything out of that, but still overall, the game is a great educational experience. Um, yeah, it, it definitely, it's on my list of good games here for sure. So, um, I'm going to come back for part three to finish it, but I will see you on the next one.